Hi, my name is Zara Alberberi and I'm a multimedia artist and together we're going to explore you and your art identity. In the next few weeks, we're going to utilize introspective art as well as art therapy exercises. And the reason why we're going to use these exercises in the next few weeks is because these exercises are usually used to help people discover and explore their emotions, develop self-awareness, and cope with stress. I can't wait to get started, so let's hop in. The next few videos are great to use your sketchbook or journal in. Your sketchbook or journal is really a safe space where you could do some exploration, experimentation, and documentation. Any activities we do together, I don't want you to think of them as finished artwork. I want you to really think of them as just a practice in mindfulness and knowing that mindfulness is observation without criticism. A reason why to do introspective art because it helps you think abstractly and helps you be more comfortable with self-expression, which can be really hard and frustrating and intimidating at first. When you are comfortable with self-expression, it gives you the opportunity to document your ideas, providing you a way to refer back to them and to view patterns which is really important. Like we said, patterns are integral to our art identity, especially when we're talking about our personality. When you examine yourself and your self-identity and be introspective, it really helps improve your judgment. It helps you identify also opportunities for personal and professional growth. Lastly, by doing introspective art, you're building self-esteem and confidence. By developing self-awareness, you broaden your outlook and examine your lifestyle, identity, and goals more objectively which overall adds to your life satisfaction because you could be more content with the choices and decisions that you make. To practice self-awareness when it comes to our art, what we do and why. First, we need to practice self-awareness of our own thoughts on our surroundings. We also really need to practice documentation of what is important and what is what stands out to us. So, keeping in mind that the shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory, Let's start our first activity. This first activity is here to help you be more aware of your thoughts and feelings. Our first activity today is immediate thoughts. Immediate thoughts. Action. Sketch the first thing you thought of when you woke up this morning. Or, if you can't remember that, sketch the first thing or person that engaged your emotions, positive or negative, today. I want you to keep in mind these questions for exploration while you're doing this activity. How does your image reflect your mood? How can your thoughts affect your motivation? So, you can pause this video and come back when you're done this first activity to do our second activity. Welcome back. Now that we have some practice using introspective art to look within ourselves, let's use introspective art to gauge our impressions of our surroundings. So for our second activity of the day, mood group. Mood group, action. Draw what you perceive to be the mood of the people around you today. Observe body language, facial expression, interactions, and what is and is not being verbalized. Questions for exploration. What colors, shapes, and or images did you use to represent the people's moods and why? How does the mood of the people around you affect your mood? Do you, someone else, or an outside power have an impact of the general mood? depict the impact and that's it for this week i encourage you to do these activities throughout the week and see if you see any patterns next week we're going to talk about our first part of our art identity our personality well i'll see you then bye